Well, hello and good morning, everybody. I'm Dallas Arcand. This is uh, a great honor and a privilege to share with you today. If you guys are wondering where I'm at, I'm in Kelowna, British Columbia, which is the next province over. So I'm a whole province over from you. I'm originally from Alberta, but I'm here in Kelowna visiting with my daughter and uh, enjoying the beautiful Okanagan weather. It is beautiful and sunny here. It's nice and warm and there's a beautiful lake just right outside. Um, I love going to the beach and I love to uh, to uh, suntan and enjoy the, the water. And one of my favorite things to do is actually boating on the water, uh, whether it's uh, with a kayak or whether it's with uh, a motorized boat. I just love it on the water. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing and it's, it's such a beautiful experience to be on the water. So uh, anyways, I'm here in the Okanagan territory. Uh, we're in a totally different time zone than you are. So it's just approaching 11 a.m. your time, which is Alberta time. And it's just about 10 o'clock here in BC time. So I'm one hour difference of uh, time from you guys. And that's how it works though. In case you guys don't know, there's different time zones. So whatever place we're at in the world, there's a different time zone because when the earth rotates around the sun, uh, we get different different time. So uh, the sun hits, hits us at very different times. So we had a sunrise way before you guys did. And uh, in Alberta, the sun rises just a little bit later than it does over here in the mountains. So where I'm at here, beautiful mountains everywhere. Uh, beautiful lake. It's a totally different country here than Fort McMurray. Fort McMurray, you guys got the uh, the Athabasca River running through the town of Fort McMurray and you guys got a lot of big, huge spruce trees and a lot of forest up there and it's very, very different from here in the Okanagan. Here we are surrounded by mountains and it's kind of like a desert here in the Okanagan territory. It's very different and there's also indigenous people that are in this territory and this is their territory. It was their, um, their lands for many, many generations before it is what it is today. Um, and uh, there's lots to know about uh, our history in Canada and uh, with the first peoples of Canada, the first, the indigenous people of Canada, which I'm indigenous. I'm indigenous from the Treaty 6 territory and uh, our language is Cree and we speak uh, the Cree language in our community. So the word for Cree and hello, uh, hello and Cree is actually uh, Tanse. So I'm gonna say Tanse. And that's our way of saying hello to you in our language. So anytime you meet somebody and you know that they speak Cree, you always say Tanse, hello. That's how you say hello in our language. And in Canada, we have two official languages, which are English and French. So you could also say bonjour. You could say bonjour. That's like in French for hello. So in um, I just, I just shared three different languages with you guys for uh, just for the purpose of knowing and sharing. And today I've got some some pretty cool things to share with you guys today. Um, I'm uh, going to eventually get dressed in my hoop dance outfit. This is my hoop dance underwear, <laughs> but it's not really underwear. It's what I wear under my outfit. I wear a special shirt for when I sweat. So. Uh, it doesn't get on my outfit, my beautiful outfit, which I'm going to show you here in a second. And also, I wear uh, very special shorts here because they match with my outfit. They have the orange color and they also have the design, the fringes. And that's something I want to share with you. But before I get into that, I want to share with you uh, a special song. And uh, I brought my, my drum here so I can sing for you and drum for you. And I'm going to share a song with my drum. This is my very, very special drum that I take with me in my travels everywhere I go. And today I want to share with you uh, a drum song. And 
everything we do in our in our culture, whether it's a powwow or a ceremony or a special event like today, we always start out things with a song. Just like uh, in Canada, uh, all across the country, they have the Canadian national anthem. You know, Oh Canada. Everybody knows that song, right? Oh Canada, our home and native land. That song. Anyways, we all know that song because as Canadians, we have to know it because it's our national anthem. And anytime we have a special event in Canada, that's what they do. But I'm talking now about First Nations and my community, where we come from. Anything we do, whenever, when we're having a special event, we always start out with an honor song. And the reason for the honor song is to honor all the all the living things and all the plants and animals and and uh, the sky, everything, to honor the day, to show respect for, for everything in our culture and everything around us. So I just thought I would share that with you and uh, and what the song is really about. So um, here we go. I'm going to share with you now an honor song. So it goes with a little something like this. song that I wanted to share with you guys today so um, anyways I uh, just uh, wanted to share a few things with you today so I am going to set up uh, some music so I can share some dancing with you guys would you guys like to dance I want to dance because uh... dancing is what I do and it's what I do best it's just like, like Winnie the Pooh Tigger Tigger bounces I dance. So anyways, I just thought I would share that with you and uh, get you guys going here this morning. The best way to start your day always is to start dancing. That's what I say, because when you dance, you get your, your heart beating. And when you get your heart beating, you get your energy going. And when you get your energy going, you can do anything. You can you can jump over things. You can uh, you can play you can uh, you can sing. You can also you can get moving. You can get grooving. So dancing is good for the body. It's good for the mind. It's good for every single thing that we do. And if you can dance, dance is really good because it makes people smile and makes people happy. And that's the reason why we dance in our culture is for healing to to share with people around the world. And that's why we dance at powwows. We dance to make people feel good. We dance because it makes us feel good as well. And that's what I, I wanted to share about dancing. And it's really important that we that we dance. It's part of our culture and who we are as Indigenous people. And it's very important to our way of life. That's why we have powwows. That's why we have things. So I want to give you guys a quick little example 
of, uh, I think I call powwow dance aerobics. Now, a lot of us have to stay home at times, and especially in the winter months, and you can't really go outside. You can go outside, but it's different. You can't really dance outside. So what I do in my home is I'll dance in my living room just like this, and I'll put on my favorite my favorite powwow song, and I'll start dancing around. So I'm going to show you guys just some basic powwow moves. So you don't have to be a powwow dancer to do this. And even if you are a powwow dancer, doing this will keep you sharp and in tune with the drum and the drum beat. So uh, we started out with the drum song. Now I'm going to put on a song that is sang by some of my good friends, the Young Bear Singers. And the Young Bear Singers are one of my favorite drum groups to dance to because they have a really good drum beat and they sing really, really beautiful. So uh, without further ado, here we go. I'm going to put on a song for you guys to, uh, to dance with me if you can. Uh, all right. So anyways, before I get into that, I wanted to show you the basic steps. So it's just a one, two step like this. So it's one, two step with your feet like this. It's really easy. So if you guys can get up and dance with me, that would be really great because it'll, it'll make me feel good. And it's going to make you feel good too, because you got to get a little bit of exercise in throughout your day, you know, maybe dance throughout the day. So this is the basic step of our of our powwow dance. It's really easy. It's just right, left, one, two, step. Right, left, one, two, step. And then swing, swing, one, two, step. And then you could use your hands like this. You can use your hands up and down, up and down while you're doing the one, two, step. And that's the rhythm that we have in our dance. So all together, it's like you're a, it's like you're a choo-choo train. It's like your locomotive. It's like chicka 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 boom 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 chicka 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 boom boom boom. So that's that's how it goes when you're when you're dancing in powwow. You're just moving and you're nonstop, just like a train going to its destination. So I'm gonna play the music here for you guys, just to share and show with you guys the music. So here we go. Get my music tuned something. Here we go. Now let's get some fancy moves in there. Here we go. Pivots. 
so that was the basics of powwow dance. Now, there's kids about your age that dance powwow. There's people of all ages that dance powwow. Soon as soon as some kids can walk, when they're just little babies, they start dancing. They call them tiny tots. And then um, as you get older, there's different categories. There's the junior category, which are uh, roughly around your guys' age, grade one, grade two grade range. And then uh, as you get older, like into grade seven, the older kids have a category called the teen category. And that's where all the teens dance from 13 to 17. And then once you become an adult, after you turn 18, you have the adult category, which is for adults like myself. And then eventually, as you get older, they have senior adult. Once you get to a certain age as well, once you get past 40, which I am in that category, the senior adult category. And then after that, they have a category for the grandmas and the grandpas. And I'm going to teach you a word in Cree. I'm going to teach you how to say that in Cree. So how you say uh, grandma and grandpa in Cree is we say kukum and mushum. So the best way to remember that, though, is I'll tell you a little bit of a joke, though. It's just a joke, okay? So it's, it's kind of funny, and it's kind of a riddle at the same time. So how uh, this is the best way to remember it. So I'm going to tell you the joke. So the joke is how do you cook your grandparents? Well, first you mush them, and you go. <laughs> That's the best way to remember it. And uh, you know, sometimes uh, you you have to uh, make up words like that to remember things, and and that's okay. That's okay. That's it's all good fun. So that's how you say your grandparents in the Cree language is mushum and kukum. So mushum is grandpa, and kukum is grandma. And like I was saying, in, in powwow, we have mushums and kukums dancing in their own category as well. So uh, I just wanted to share that with you. So um, now that uh, we've got the, the dancing part, I want to share with you some music. So I have right here is my flute. This is my special flute. It's from our culture. It's very different from any other flute in the world because... Um, you know, this is our indigenous flute. This comes from uh, my ancestors. We're the ones that were gifted this flute. And uh, these flutes have been passed on for many, many generations. So a long, long time ago, these were given to our, our men to play for the women and children, to play songs, to, to share the beauty of our culture and share the beauty of our music. So how this flute works is it's very different from your recorder flutes at school or any other flute in the world it's very different because you blow into this chamber and we have a bird here this is a an eagle sitting on top it's a nice eagle bird and then you blow into here and it goes in through here and it hits this chamber and it goes down and comes back up and then it hits these notes right here we have six notes on here on the flute and they all are in different notations and they are in a pentatonic scale. So what's cool about our flutes is that they can imitate any bird sound in the world. So uh, I just thought I would share that with you and how our flutes work. Now I'm gonna play a song for you guys with this flute and you'll hear how, how different it sounds from any other flute in the world. I'm gonna play you guys the Mother Earth song. So it goes a little something like this.
there you go. There's the uh, flute song, the Mother Earth song. All right, I have some water. All right, so I've got another flute to show you before I get on to the next part of my presentation for today. So this flute is very, very different from, from the other flute. It's still uh, an indigenous style flute, but it's very different. It's made differently. It's a different type of wood. This one's a lighter wood. It's more of a cedar type wood. It's really soft. It's really uh, soft wood. This one's a really hard wood, and this is made from ironwood, and it's uh, one of the hardest woods in the world. And it's like, um, it's harder than a baseball bat, to, to be uh, honest with you. And <laughs> the size is very different. This one's way bigger. And this one's way wider. And it's, uh, it's, very, it's a very special flute. It was given to me as a gift from uh, a dear friend of mine. And uh, this friend of mine, he really liked my music. So he gave me a flute. He gifted me a flute, and I was so honored and privileged to be gifted. Now, what's different about this flute is it actually has, uh, it still has the six holes, but what's different is it has two chambers. So it's like playing two flutes in one. See, there's two blow holes there where you blow in. Same idea, you blow in, and it goes and hits the chamber, and it comes back down, melody note. Now, when you play the two together, it, it sounds very different from playing the other flute. And uh, the, the song I'm going to share with you with this flute is um, a song that I made up. It's on one of my CDs. If you look up, if you are your parents ever uh, looking for flute music, look up Dallas Arcan, Sacred Sweetgrass. You can find me on different digital music platforms such as Apple Music or Spotify, anything like that. You guys are familiar with that. Uh, you probably even find me on TikTok as well. So if you guys are TikTokers, you might find me on there as well. So anyways, um, you'll find my music different places in the world. So anyways, I thought I would share another song with you. This song is uh, a song I made called Pisim. Pisim is the word in our language, in our Cree language. And Pisim means sun. The sun is very important to all beings, all humans on earth, all living things on earth benefit from the sun. We need the sun. We need the sun for light. We need the sun for, for warmth. We need the sun to grow our plants. And we need the sun for, for everyday life here on earth. And the sun is, um, is very important to, to our way of life. So that's why I made a song about the sun and just uh, honoring the sun and, and being grateful and being thankful for that. So here we go. Here's the song. P sim goes a little something like this. song P. Sim. Now, I think it's about time that I start getting into my hoop dance outfit. Now, like I said before, this is what I wear under my hoop dance outfit because it matches. It's part of it. And I don't wear this medallion when I have my hoop dance uh, outfit on because when I dance, it goes way out like this and it'll fly off my head. And, and I, I can't have that. It's such a beautiful medallion. It just needs to sit here on my neck. And I can't really wear it when I dance. Maybe if I do fancy dance, it's totally different. 
but when you're hoop dancing you can't really have long fringes and things in your way so this is my medallion that represents for my name which is the dancing buffalo man that's why i have the buffalo here and these four feathers represent for the four directions so north south east west and it also represents for the four seasons as well so we have winter we have spring which we're in now and then summer and fall so we always follow things in fours in our culture, in our way of life. So I'm going to take this off for now and put it aside because it's time to dress in my other outfit. So one of the first things as, as dancers that we have to do is we have to take care of our hair. That's the very first thing. So I wanted to show you, like, uh, as Indigenous people, and especially for the men, it, we're, we're very different. Most Indigenous people that practice their culture, um, you know, know about long hair. And it's it's kind of different. You know, you don't always see men or boys having really long hair and, and everybody else in the world uh, is very different from us. So the reason why we keep, keep our hair long as uh, indigenous men is uh, that's where our knowledge is. That's where all our stories are in our, in our hair. Every, every time our hair grows, we get a little bit wiser. We know a little bit more. That's where our knowledge is. That's where our power is in our spirit. So um, my hair, I have it half long and uh, half shaved. And for me, I, I like that that style because um, it, for me, I, I tend to sweat when I work out and it works better. I can still have long hair, which is right here. And I'm going to show you what we do with it. This is what we do. I'm going to show you guys an example. This is what we have to do when we get dancing and we get moving is we have to braid our hair. So braiding your hair, I'm gonna show you how to do it like this. So this is me braiding my hair. And uh, it doesn't take you that long, but I wanted to show you guys what it takes to be a dancer. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta do everything yourself. But there's some kids on the powwow trail that, that have to, uh, get their hair braided but me I braid my own so like this just braiding it almost done and once I get it to a certain length then I can do it from the side and I'm just braiding it and it took me a lot of a lot of practice to to figure out how to do this on my own because a lot of times uh, when I was on the powwow trail or dancing at different performances I was by myself and I had to figure out how to do this myself and that's called being independent you know eventually you'll have to do things for yourself and when you do things for yourself you feel so much better and you know, it's like, it's like you're a big kid, you know, you're, you're growing up, you do it by yourself. So there you go. There's my braid. And that's the first thing that I do when I put on my outfit, other than putting this on and changing. So now I want to um, bring, bring the camera down here. And bring it down. Well, I want to show you um, my out. This is one of my outfits. So this is the headband right here. This is the the neck piece. This is the vest. Here's the belt. Here's the uh, they call them breech cloths. And these are the leggings, which I'll need for my other outfit. And these are the legging covers. They sit over the leggings. Here's the moccasins. And I gotta grab these. And uh, I'm going to. Here's the outfit I'm going to put on. So this is the outfit that matches with the orange and there's my drum and I have other outfit pieces as well from, from other outfits that I have. So I wanted to show you guys just because I feel like I'm doing show and tell right now. I'm sure you guys are doing show and tell. Do they still do that in school? <laughs> I'm pretty sure they do. So anyways, I wanted to get started with putting on the outfit and share with you guys uh, since we're in school, for time for show and tell, I want to show you guys, tell you guys how to put on the outfit. And then after this, I'm going to show you guys some poop dancing. 
and show you really how it all works. Oops, there goes my leggings. So anyways, the first part of putting on my outfit, it requires these. I always start with these first. And then we're going to have the moccasins. So I've got my moccasins. Those are my shoes or my, my footwear. So the very first thing I do is I put on these. These are my moccasin, uh, or these are my legging covers. So they just slide on my leg like this. I put them on like this. And so it, it covers up my, uh, my fringes. And then the next thing I do before I even put on my fringes is I put on my moccasins. And sometimes I wear socks in them, but I, I like wearing socks with my moccasins because uh, it, it, it makes them a lot more comfortable. Traditionally, our people didn't really have socks because uh, it wasn't part of it wasn't part of that lifestyle because traditionally our, our ancestors wore these. You didn't need socks for these. These are moccasin wraps. So anyways, I just thought I would share that with you. So anyways, I'm here I am tying my moccasin, tying it into a nice little, um, perfect little knot. And some of you probably know how to tie your shoes and maybe some of you don't. But anyways, it's really easy to do once you learn it. It's the coolest trick in the world to learn how to tie knots. And you don't just tie any old knot. So anyways, uh, I've, I've done this so many times. Uh, at powwows, at performances, when I'm performing at stages and different shows, whether it's the Calgary Stampede or the Olympics or some music festival somewhere, I've performed all over Canada, on different, all over the United States and different parts of the world. I've been to different countries and performed and shared uh, this beautiful hoop dance. So there you go. The moccasins are, are tied on nice and tightly because you don't want them to fall off. And you got to make sure your shoes are tied because you don't want to be tripping over anything. So especially with hoop dancing, hoop dancing takes a lot of work. So here's my, my leggings. They go on my leg right here. And I got to make sure that these fringes don't get caught on them. So I just flip them up. And this is really simple. It's different from tying your shoes. This one's just a simple knot. So I just really just do a snug knot. And I don't tie it too tight of a knot. I just do a simple little knot. It's not the same as tying your shoes where you do a loop, two loops together. And then I place this moccasin cover right over my legging like that. And it sits over my legging. See, it kind of blends in with the outfit. See, it matches my, my shorts. It matches here. So we got a match. It's just, it's just like playing a matching game, really. So a lot of, uh, a lot of our outfits are, are very, very neat. That's why we don't call them costumes, because this is not something I'd wear on Halloween. So I just thought I would share that with you guys that, you know, we, we don't call these costumes because it's, it's, you know, our outfit and our culture is not a costume, you know, and so if, if, uh, you know, I, there's people that, there's people that are kind of rude that dress up as, as indigenous people for Halloween and that's not cool. So anyways, I just thought I would share that with you guys that, you know, our, our outfits are not costumes. They're, they're outfits. They're specific. They're, they're, uh, custom made and, uh, each outfit is very unique to, to every individual. So, for example, my outfit, nobody has an outfit like this in the world. I'm the only one that has this outfit. And, and that's how it is on powwow culture in, in our culture, in our way of life. We have our designs, which represent for our name, like on my medallion I shared with you. It's, uh, it's got the buffalo on it. So, anyways, I'm just finishing up. I got the second legging on now. And so I got, a, I, I got really creative with my design here. So I just pull out my fringe here. I just pull it through the back and just give it a quick little tie here so that my moccasin or my legging covers stay on when I dance. So there you go. Those are the covers. Those are the, those are the leggings. So the leggings just hang down like that. 
And when I dance, they move with me when I dance. And that's that's the key to having a really good outfit. So now I want to switch things up and get off of my chair here a little bit. Show you how I put on the rest of the outfit. Okay. All right. So my chair. Oh, I'm going to make an adjustment. It's a little bit too tight on that side. All right. Adjustment made. All right. Not so tight there. All right. So how are we doing for time here? We are, okay, we're doing okay. All right, so always got to tuck in your shirt when you're, uh, you know, when you when you got to put on your outfit because you don't want any of that hanging out. And the next part is I got to start from the, I start from the bottom. I always start from the bottom. You know, I first I did my hair and now I'm putting on the rest of this here. So I always put my outfit away when I'm done with it. I don't just throw it in a bag and forget about it, like hockey equipment, <laughs> you know, because my daughter plays hockey. She just throws her stuff in the bag and she's done with it. You know, I'm sure she's got a, a certain way of putting it away, but I remember taking her to hockey and she just throws it in the bag. For me, I always have to fold and put away my outfit perfectly every time. It has to be in a certain place. So the first thing I put on is the bottom is the bottom part of the outfit, which I just tied on like this. And I could actually tie the knot in the back of my, without even looking, I'm just tying the knot here, see? It's just a quick little loop knot, boom, done. And then I put, place this over, center it, and then I put this on and then I tie a knot in front here like that. One simple knot and you got to tuck it in because you always want to be nice and neat. You know, any outfit that you wear, it's all about your appearance. If you care about your appearance, then you'll look good. And you always got to like, you always got to check yourself in these times. So the next part I put on is my belt and side drops. So this is my fully beaded belt, which matches my outfit. And I've got the side drops here, which they cover the sides of my outfit. So you don't see that, even though you'll see it, but you won't see it, if that makes any sense. So the best way to put on this is I put it on backwards first, like this. And I have, I have little buttons here that I've, uh, I, I did all this outfit myself, so I, I had to create a way to put it on. So I put it on backwards, and then I just twist it around, and boom, there's the side drops. Side drops are on. All right, now, next part is I'm going to get on the vest. So this is my vest that I put on and I wear. So it goes a little something like this. Put on the vest. And here we go. All right, I got a zipper here, and ooh, it's a little tight because of COVID, hey? <laughs> Everybody's been on that COVID diet, so I'm definitely, I got a few extra pounds because this vest used to be baggy on me, but it's all right. It still fits. All right, so then the next part I do is I put on my beaded top piece, and um in our, in our in our culture, we have powwow terminology. So powwow terminology, you you basically have to live and dance powwow in order to understand. This is what you call a yoke because you wear it on top of your on top of your shoulders, and it's and it's a yoke, right? They call it a yoke, but it's uh, a beaded. To me, it's uh, a beaded shoulder piece that decorates the upper part of my outfit, so it looks nice and full. And then next part is I'm going to get on my uh, chest plate. So I'll put it on like this. And then I have a little, a little string here to keep it secure because when I dance, I don't want it flopping. So I make sure it's tied good. So what I do is I, is I actually tie it around. I just loosely tie it around here. So it doesn't like fly out when I, when I dance and get in the way of my hoops or anything. So 
So I just tie it off on the side here, a little little side knot, a little loop knot, a little slip knot. So just make sure that that's secured. So there you go. So when I dance, it doesn't fly out. No, it's, it's not that bad. Okay. So then from here, I got a couple more pieces to throw on here now. So I have my uh, my <clears throat> my necktie and my headband. So I'm going to adjust the camera now back up to here. So. I'm actually going to get into some dancing and show you some some hoop dancing and, and how the hoop dance works. So I'm almost fully dressed now. I just got to put on my necktie and a couple of other things. So my necktie right here, it just sits on here and I got a nice little button system for it. So just snap the button and snap, boom, done. One step process. So there you go, there's the necktie and it sits right here, covers up that piece. And when I dance, there you go. So here, this is my headband and it sits on top of my head like this. And boom, there we go. So now we have that. And then one more last piece. This is my, my favorite outfit to wear because it, it has the most pieces. It has even more pieces than that outfit over there. So uh, I have different outfits. I have probably about four or five different outfits that I wear. So what I do here is I zip it up first and I slip it on. It's my arm cuff. Sometimes it's hard to get on, but it has to be tight so it, so it doesn't flop around on me. So there we go. And this side. Oh, and uh, before I put on this one, I wanted to share with you my tattoos. I have tattoos. So this is my my hoop hoop dancing tattoo. And it's three rings there to represent for the three world championships that I've earned. And also I I am also have Celtic roots as well. So I'm I'm a little bit Irish, a little tiny bit Irish. That's why I have green eyes like this. So that's what, something I thought I would share. It's it's a Celtic tattoo and my hoop tattoo. And right here is my feather tattoo. That's my eagle feather. And to earn an eagle feather in our culture is the, is the highest honor. So it's just something I thought I would share with you guys in case you're curious. In case you didn't know, now you know. All right. So here we go. I'm going to put on the last piece of the outfit. So again, I slightly zippered it up and then I just slip it on. And this is my cuff. Uh-oh, it's a little bit too tight. All right, just gotta adjust it here. These are hard to slip on sometimes, especially when I haven't put them on in a while. My bones aren't used to it anymore. Oh, almost on. It's kind of warm in here. Oh, okay, I can feel it slipping. Slowly but surely, I got it on. All right, so now I gotta zip it up. I have a little zipper there. Put little zippers on my outfit. So there we go. Now I'm fully dressed. Now I'm ready for hoop dancing. So now all I need is some hoops. So what I have here is I have myself a little, little stash of hoops. I dance with uh, a different variety of hoops. I dance with anywhere from, from five to uh, 25. 28 hoops is the most I dance with. But today I'm only, I don't have enough room to dance with all my hoops today. So uh, I'm going to demonstrate for you guys with six hoops right here. I have six hoops now that I can dance with. I don't have a lot of room in here. So it's really, really jammed in here. So I'm going to place my hoops on the ground because that's our style as hoop dancers. And I'm not going to be able to dance couch here in the way um you know a lot of us have had to stay home during this global pandemic and it's been really challenging but we're almost through it we're almost through it so i think this summer uh, by the end of the summer things are going to go kind of slowly back to normal and i can't promise anything though but i am definitely hopeful for the future so here we go i'm going to do a quick dance for you guys now and just show you the uh, 
the hoop dance and and basically it's a it's a dance that we do in our culture it's an indigenous style hoop dance it's very different from hula hooping it's way different it's not even hula hooping so hula hooping for example is where you spin the hoops and the hoops are way bigger so the hoops that i have they're measured to my body and they only fit right here and the reason for that is so i can flip them and i can move them throughout my body and i can dance with them and the only thing i can't do with them is hula hoop and i don't even know how to do that <laughs> i couldn't even do that if my if uh somebody paid me a hundred dollars i would not be able to to do it uh, see i can't do a hula hoop <laughs> so i just thought i would share that with you guys so now here's a quick example of the uh, hoop dance and after this i'll take some questions all right, so here's a quick uh, example of the hoop dance. So here's the uh, young bear singers again. There you go. There's a quick example of the hoop dance, what it means. There's a lot to understand about the hoop dance. So with that, I want to open up now for questions. 